Hi everyone, this is John K.O. from Let's Chat Podcast. Uh, today I have an opportunity and pleasure to talk to Liam Mukahi. Liam is a sports therapist based in Woodlands Hotel in County Limerick in Adair. Liam is a good friend of mine and person who does a lot of good stuff in and around Limerick. So Liam, thank you so much today for, you know, for doing this with me no today. Pleasure, no as always. Um, as I said to you, uh, like I said to all the rest of the people I'm chatting away with, please feel free to say a few bits and pieces about yourself. I'm going to go through a few questions with you, and what I want from you is just to tell me a bit about yourself, your history, yeah. where and how the idea of the sports therapy came from, the being an entrepreneur, working for yourself, and you know, a few achievements, what did you do, how did you do it, simple as that. So let's start with the simplest one. Who is Lynn? Who is Lynn? Good question. Um, basically, I suppose like I'm a father first, um, with three kids um, and a wife. I've been married for 15 years. Um, so I would have been like I'm from Kamalak originally, um, and I would have moved um, from Kamalak in 2003 to Cashel in Tipperary. Um, my wife's from, from Staples from Cashel. So we came from Cashel, moved to Limerick, and I think this is where kind of I, th I think the second phase of Liam Mulcahy as our since starts really. Um, in we were just I'd say we were married maybe just over a year, and my wife was pregnant. Um, so happy days. Um, we already had had one child, and we were expecting the second, and. We found out two weeks before that child was born that that child was um, had an underdeveloped left heart. Okay, so basically um, the right side was very developed and the left side was seriously underdeveloped. And I suppose we were kind of given the rock hard news to say that we would only have maybe four days with the child, and the child later became Sophie. But um, so at, at the time we were under a lot of pressure, um, didn't know a young couple, um, got married, um, just married, everything, bought a house, everything had been going great up until that stage until we were kind of delivered huge news like that. Like, so basically we were told that look, um, I suppose the news we were really given was take her home because it wasn't going to survive, you know. Um, so there we were kind of given the option at that stage, it was kind of true. One of the doctors in maternity to maybe go to Crumlin and see how see what our chances might be there. So that's what we did. Um, so Stacey um, and I went to Dublin um, on the second of July, um, two thousand and six, and basically from there, ten days later, um, we were born into. A situation, well, um, I suppose, where it changed our whole life. So we had this beautiful um, little baby, and we were told that like she would undergo surgery to correct the defect in the yes. heart. So from there we were kind of okay. Look, this looks good, um, and everything. But it was yeah, it was yeah, it was really good, um, and like we weren't expecting that because um, so we had we had mental surgery in Crumlin. And we were kind of very overwhelmed with the surgery and what way she would react, react to surgery and stuff like that. Like, so they explained it really well. We were made us really comfortable. Surgery seemed like, for, for a surgeon's point of view, a walk in the park. It was very easy, very. Um, so went down. I remember we were, we were actually staying in the parents' accommodation in Crumlin. But we, were, we just walked around. We, couldn't, we knew the, the, I suppose, the surgery. Like it was playing on our mind how long we would go for. So ended up the surgery was five hours, got a call to come back up to the parents' waiting room. Um, that things weren't good. So went back up, um, found out that the initial diagnosis with the heart was completely like played down, that it was far more greater issues there. And it ended up that Sophie ended up going back down for surgery again that day. So like she was out of surgery, like you could have seen her. She was like this tiny, tiny little baby. And the surgeon like had these like real holy hands, you know? Yes. And we were thinking like what's what's going on, you know? So from there 
went through it, she got through the night, went down for the certain surgery. Um, so like we kind of, at the time Dion was in, I think he was, he was only five, um, so we had to kind of comprehend with Limerick and Crumlin. Yes. You know, and who, so we were lucky, we were lucky, we were there maybe a month I think in the parents accommodation and we got into the Royal MacDonald House there and the Royal MacDonald House is fantastic. It's a kind of, I suppose, the way we had described it was it was a home away from home. So Dion could stay, we were literally next door to Stacey, our sofa sir, and we didn't have to spin the fart in there. Okay? And the thing with the Royal MacDonald House is if you stay a certain time, uh, say a certain length in the house, that's it, you're, you don't pay any more after that. Like. Okay. So then you could go on to, like, um, I suppose really, like, we, we were there for a lot longer than initially when, when they stopped that's us, totally you know. Um, so again, just to get this, get along, we were there, we ended up being, being there seven months in total. Um, Sophie went through um, four more open heart surgeries all the way until Christmas and into the new year and the new year like a lot of positive stuff came in the new year like she was always fighting off she had been ventilated in intensive care yeah. for the seven months that we were there got her home and I suppose I think once we got her home and got back to our house got back to normality we were looking at the time once we, we were there a few months we found out Sophie's condition, she had severe disability as well, so she couldn't walk, couldn't talk. She had lost kind of, I suppose, the initial baby issues that she should have developed. Yeah. So from being open from the front, she couldn't, like, her natural responses weren't there. So we had to care for her and, and we did. Um, and I suppose that's kind of where the charity element, I, 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 I was in the army at the time. Um, I did 21 years early retired um, about 18 months ago and from there we kind of tried to piece everything together coming back in, coming yeah. back to Limerick and, and stuff like that and like a lot of the stuff was just overwhelming getting her home, the, the, the equipment she needed and the feed, she was fed through a tube in her nose so everything was really new, we had to train in, in Dublin, it wouldn't leave us home until yeah, of course. Yeah. So through that we, this is where kind of the charity element came in, we kind of got home and we like we were involved with Mabel Ireland, the Ronald MacDonald House, Cronin, Jack and Jill, um, and all these and we were like, how do we how do we thank them? Like they had they'd given us back our little girl, you know. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of where we went into it. We went in full hog into it cycling wise and stuff. We set up cycling clubs I and that, yeah. yeah. yeah um, so we, we did and we like I think at the moment, like if I look back on it now, I don't think there's a kids' charity in Limerick that or in nearly in Ireland that we haven't supported or um, so like we, we just threw ourselves into it. Um, set up the cycle club, went around, raised funds for everything. Um, and, and that's kind of where it led to a degree um, over a number of years. And then unfortunately um, as time went on, um, 2014 um, initially when Sophie had her operation, she had renal failure. Yeah. So, but they came back, her kidney started to work again, but we went to Crumlin in, I think it was July, June, July uh, 2014, and to get the kidneys checked, and we found out that Sophie didn't have a kidney function anymore, that her normal kidney function was almost beyond repair. Um, so we had to look down the lines of different, I suppose, different ways and stuff in one of those ways was kidney transplant. Yeah. So we looked at it, I was, I was a match, and we were hoping that the doctors would give us the go ahead um, and see see how it would go. But because of all our previous surgeries, the main things that she needed for repair were heart and lungs, and they were probably two of her, her, her worst um, contributions at the time. Um, so the doctors kind of took everything out of our hands and said, um, look, that this is it, like, you know, and I suppose we had been in and out of the hospital so many times, up and down the Crumlin, so many times, the fact that we were, I suppose, how, how I felt was defeated, you know, we were going to lose this battle, we were told that Sophie uh, was terminally ill and was given one year to live. And that was like... Not a great news for No, for oh, absolutely 
absolutely yeah, it's horrible. horrible. Oh my god. Um, and that kind of that impact kind of sent us into an unbelievable dark hole, you know. And we sat there for for ages, looking and thinking, no, we we've never been beaten, you know. Yeah. And and Sophie's never been beaten, and it kind of we fell into a kind of a, a dark area where we tried. Just couldn't get out. Just couldn't get get in our heads that this was going to happen. And over a kind of a number of weeks, we were up down to Crumlin again, and we found we went to. I remember we went to Crumlin um, on a Tuesday. Sophie had been really really sick, and found out that she had a chest infection. And I just said to the doctor, I said, "Look, this is really serious." I said, "Will we will we will we see Christmas?" You know, and he said, yeah, yeah, look, she's, she's fighting hard, she's in a bit of what's called it. Came down, um, came down from Crumlin on the Tuesday, the Wednesday morning, she was really laboured, and like, we were going to an intensive care element at home, me and Stacey were kind of, we'd gone into a different zone, and we had kind of upped the care to, like, our lives were, hadn't, weren't relevant anymore and what we done outside wasn't relevant so and that had been for a while. We found out um like that we went into the hospital that day and that was it. You know, we found out that she, she, she we were told that she had that whoever needed to be here, get them straight away because this was it. And it was nice, I know it's it's a weird thing to say, um but we had actually everybody around, you know, that we, we needed there and it was funny that morning she passed away and it was like it was surreal. Do you know we were kind of just can't be and like I remember I'll never forget it like obviously but we left the hospital that day and I remember walking out into the car park with Stacey thinking, what, 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 what the fuck happened here? Like, this is not real. No, no, this isn't real like the fact and the impact and it was only then when she had passed away, the impact that we had seen. And the people that were actually she had touched the amount of letters that we got sent from people that like very important in the sense that we like somebody had told us they had taken a step back off a bridge. Some people had told us they had given up alcohol, they had you know changed their lives around because her case was far worse than theirs. Yeah. You know, and like yeah, you can take it, you can take a little bit of a comfort in it, but like. Yeah, but your child's gone. Your child's gone, done, you know. Yes. Um, and that's, that's can replace that nothing, nothing can replace it. Like, and like that whole world that we had, and like we, like she was eight, um, and like everything was a milestone. Like, and it's funny, like people take these communions and confirmations as like they're a given, you know. Yes. And like we took each milestone, each birthday, each little thing that she did, where she picked something up. You know, um, every little thing and her progress. And I always say this to Stacey still. I think if she was still with her with us, the progress that she would have been now would have changed her completely. Like you know, and we we committed to that care. Even everybody, even when when Kayla was born, Kayla was born two years after Sophie, and everybody in the house kind of. We're well, on, yeah. You know, and that's kind of what like like we're we're married, fifteen years like and. We're a very tight couple, like, and this is kind of what I feel has has made us that couple, you know. Yeah. Um, it's just it can it can like we we've seen other people in, in the house in the Ron McDonald house absolutely falling apart, you know. And it was just like geez, you know, and like the support element wasn't always there for them. Yeah. We was lo I was lucky, the army were very good to me. Um I made sure that I, I had stayed there. They all went to school in the hospital, like, like so the young in the hospital which Lord sick kid, he was the healthiest kid in the hospital, you know. Yeah. Um, but adapted, adapted really well, and unfortunately, like for Dion, had to grow up really quick. Yeah, and, that, and that's a that's a hard one on the other two kids. Yeah. You know what I mean? Having an, you know other kids in the relationship, and yeah. everything is kind of mainly oriented towards the first kid. Absolutely. I mean, absolutely. The kid that is sick, it's very hard and it takes a lot from the. I other does, kids. I does, you know, and like we we just kind of. I said like it was kind of everything was just taking a step, taking a step, like people were good. Um and I and I, I think like for myself and Stacey then like we, we like 
what we got off Sophie, like it kind of, you know, it made us kind of, like, it definitely developed a huge drive in us, you know, um, in the sense that we kind of, okay, let's let's do this, let's let's get out, like, you know, we had taken, like, buckets of inspiration from this yes. tiny little girl that had fought so hard, you know, um, and, like, even, like, the likes of, like, Sonia Sullivan, Paul Kimmich, Sam Bennett, all these huge stars, right, Billy yeah. Dunbar, all these lads that came in, supported us, um, and we were, like, you know, like it was huge, and they, these kind of like were cycling down the road with Sonia Sullivan and stuff, and you're going, Jesus, like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> you know? and like, what's, they, going what's going on here? Like, you know, and th those people were, they were like taken in by her. You know, they took, they were taken in by her spirit, by like she had a smile, like for a girl that was like so many surgeries, so many, she always smiled. Yeah. You know, um, always smiled, and like I think like even I look at Dion, no, Dion's nineteen. He's just developed into this really good guy, you know, that you can't teach it, you can't teach it, you can't introduce it. He just developed it himself just from, I think, the role he played. Like, yeah. and, like there was a time when Dion had to do like, CPR in, in, on Sophie in the back of the car. Like, no child should have been going through that. Yeah, yeah. but, but that's, like that, that's, just like, that's part of it. Yeah. Yes. That's the role that you know he had to take yeah, on. Yeah, take on. Yeah. Even if he maybe wanted or not, mm -hmm. he was just part of it. And like it was, just, as I said, it just went down to lead to kind of a, a load of things. But I definitely don't think I'd be here in this position, in any position, um, unless we had Sophie in my hand. I, I just I kind of I just found that it was like this known pain, not so much pain, but this known feeling that we had was actually starting to wear off. Yeah. And it wasn't like a year on, two years on. No, it was nearly two and a half years on before I actually realised realised it just kind of from a state of almost I won't say deep set depression, but um, just oh my god, like do you know, and I went from this really active person to nothing. Nothing at all. Like, and it was just that impact that like, you know, people say Oh, but moving on and it, it'll be okay. Like it's, it's never okay. It's not, you know. The, the moving on is described from this really dark, horrible, shit all over the place. Yes. To actually kind of, you know, coming out a little bit, like you know. And the thing with it is, it's still, like I was lucky. Look, I, I'm blessed. I'm blessed, and she love hearing this. But like, I'm blessed to have a really good, a lovely wife, like you know. Yeah. That has that we just bounce off each other. Um. Really lucky to have two beautiful kids, and like I always, and it's funny, I always describe like people ask me how many kids you have, and I always say three, right? Because I don't want to go into explanations. Yes, yeah. well, I had two, yeah. but you know, I'm like the thing with it is like if people you do when you you land this on a strange person, like anybody that knows me will know what my background, been, you know. How it so been, yeah. like anybody that doesn't know me doesn't need to know, and like if they do, they go. They're, they're, they're there, and you can see the absolute horror. Of you know, it's it's like it's like white white yes, yeah. yeah. So, um, so we do, we just I have three kids. That's it's it. just, and I always have three kids. Um, and and like that's the the fight like, um, that we put in. And I think like that again, with with the passing, like as I said, our passing. I I retired out of the army four years after. As I said, they were very good to me in every in every sense of the of help that I needed. Um, as I said, like even with say a constant element and stuff like that after, it was great. And like the sport, like this is kind of where like we had previous charity and we moved the charity kind of under Sophie's umbrella, like we brought this really good thing. And I think like we brought people from doing marathons, climbing mountains, do you know, and it was everybody wanted to achieve something. And I think that's what we kind of what she brought to it as well, that like yeah, I want to help I want to help kids. I want to help, you know, in charities and stuff like that. And like even with, with the park in Munger now, like you know, that's been That's one of the things that I want yeah. to ask you. The, the park, park kids park in Munger, yeah. you know, a lot of people don't know the, the, the story behind it and everything else. So I just want you to kinda of elaborate a bit on that and explain to people where that idea came from and how yeah you were able to actually achieve something. Like See, that. like that, like we, we had brought Sophie, like we Sophie had done Limerick Half Martins, duatlands, everything. We brought her everywhere, like you know. 
So like we ride with her everything. So like from a sense of going to the playground, it's a simple thing. As I said, our kids were young. We used to go into the playground, and like there's some beautiful playgrounds in, in Limerick. And she just she'd sit there in the buggy. It was not we could because she was totally independent. Yes. And for us, like we, we used to put her there, and that was it. Like um, so we kind of yeah we put her on a swing, hold her, and then. We were looking at like, and look, the kids are, you know, they come and go, oh, she's lovely and everything, and they'd, they'd rub her tube in her face and go, oh, she's okay, and all this, and it just kind of spiraled from there, really, to be honest, and yeah. like, we, we had no outlet for her, there was no outlet for any child, not any child, Which, regardless of, of, yes. of Sophie, like, there was not, and she was still alive at the time, and I just thought, you know what, I'm going to try and take this a bit further, like, you know, yeah. um, so, um, Maria Gorn, I went to her and I said, Maria, look, I, I don't know what to do. I have this beautiful pack drawn here for disability, and like it's just literally an A4 page, and I'm thinking, they're, they're going to just throw it away. It's magic, yeah. it's crazy, you know. Um, so she goes, Do you know what? I, I get you a meeting with um, the, county, or the council and uh, the, the building and the planning and stuff, and, and see, like, you know. So we came in and, and a friend of mine is actually in Australia with his family, you know, Keith Morell. Goes, Liam, I, I give you a hand with this. I'd love to get on it. Yeah. yeah. So we did, and we, we we threw everything at it. And in fairness, like we met the council, like and I literally put this sheet of paper. And I go, like, can you build this? You know, can you make this? And, uh, so like we went away and we got um we got it we got a help like you know with the drawings and stuff like that. So we brought them back this and like the council were so good. So good, like, and like, they, they had at the time they showed us the park in Munger, like, and it was only kind of half the space that it, that's actually there now. And they go, like, look, this would be the park. And you're, oh my god, like, it's so big for the playground, and you know, the playground's going to be over here, you can't have the whole, yeah. can't have the whole park, like, you know. And then they extended it on, and like, you look at Munger now, but like, the thing with it is, so many people have travelled to see this park. Yes. And like, the park is, is simple, like, the ideas that were brought in by, um, company compound um, and like Keith was was very good in the sense that like came in this will work this will work you know and now you look at it and like there's an array of disability spaces yes you know there's autism awareness things and like unfortunately like, sometimes the park is so busy because it's such an attraction like that look I know autism is like with the different spectrums it's not always quiet and, and peaceful and stuff like that like, but it's just like you go up there and like the council are really good, they put a little tree for Sophie on the top of the hill like, and a little black. So yeah, yeah, yeah that's right, yeah, he it to yeah. And um, that was pretty cool and it's nice to kind of go out there and because it's, like the thing with the park in Munger, it's, it's like, I know the city but it feels like it's, it's out of country, yes. you know. Yes, so is. from there, like, that, was, that was basically it, like without those guys help at the start and I, I, I like, it wasn't, it certainly wasn't all me like, and like, as I said, from Ray Warren getting us in that day and not getting us chucked out for, yeah, you know, for this, like this was that was that was huge for us. Like so, um, no, like the, and, and that's kind of what we tried to push for. Like we did, we did up, um, I suppose, like Dor the Dor is a charity. They had a respite house and stuff, and we did their like like kind of sixty minute makeover. But the lads that were doing it with us, it was more like like four hours, nine hours, and they were trying to get this. Get this done. We got a paint, like just different projects that we felt that were positive for kids, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. And like even at that time, like I suppose that would kind of like lead on to I suppose why we're here in a sense because like in, when 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 Sof passed in twenty fourteen, a friend of mine Willie Hogan, he was a good friend of mine through the army and stuff like that. He was big into the physio and sports therapy and stuff like that. He said, "Would you not try this?" He says, "I said, look, it's it's." I'll introduce him. He was running the course at the time, and he says to me, "Look, it'll take your mind off everything, and you know." And it like it literally went into it just for that and all. I didn't go into it for a career. I didn't go into it for. I literally did it as a distraction. Just keep, your mind keep my mind there, busy, yeah. like, and and it's that's the thing, like, the, and like the thing with it is, I, I think I'm still in that frame of mind, and I was definitely in it in the sense that if we slow down, we'll actually really realise what's happened to us and what's yeah. impacted our lives. And I just find that since we've done it, like 
you know, I've met some unreal people, you know, um, across the board of sport, and it's just the fact again that I suppose you're, you're actually helping people, like, you know, and you can play a small part in, like, whether, like, I'm working with, with, with a guy at the moment, um, an older man, and like, his, his big thing was just to stand in front of the mirror to shave himself, you know, he didn't have the balance, didn't have the court, like, he can do that now, he can do a lot more now, you know, and that kind of reward is still there. It's so it's, it's just shifted, yeah. yeah. It's just shifted from, I suppose, the charity element, and like I am still involved, but not as much. Yeah, yeah I, I did just for my own kind of health wise. I took myself out of it because we were dealing with kids that were in the life, like so. So just for my own thing, I can bring this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was yes. no kind of rest at all, and so <laughs> I just felt by getting into this and just giving it everything. You know, um, and like like everything, whether it was a charity or a run or whatever, just give it, give it everything, and you can't play. You know, you, there's no like if you if you go half hour into anything, forget about it. Forget about it. You know, yes. um, and and that was the thing. So as like 2015 came, and like I remember I started off, and um, it was funny doing the course and, and courses like, and they were coming and coming and coming, and I was there and I was like. It was just kind of, I don't know, it was almost an addiction then, you know, that you're kind of doing fill my head, you know, yes. um, with this, like, yeah. yeah, and you were getting, meeting, as I said, new people, and you were getting to, like, like I'm big into sport myself, so I love, like, I get to go to watch matches, you know, and, like, you know, you get clients now that are coming into you that are, like, big sports stars and stuff like that, and I've done, you know, and it's nice to have played just that much. Yeah. You know, sometimes it's a bit bigger. Well, some, but you yeah, you that much can just to help so much like, more. It's, yeah. it's massive, like, and I just, I just feel from that there, it can, it can only grow. I, I'm obviously retired out in the army now. I'm doing, like, I'm here full time, um, and it is like it's intense, like, and it's, it's late evenings, it's long drives, it's kind of yeah. I, I'll, be, I'll be honest, we don't, we don't always get it right. Yeah. You know, but, and that's nice. part, of, that's part of life, I think. But like that curve as well, like, and I think. Like you can have you can have this the skill and you can have the knowledge, but like you need a personality. You know what I mean? You need that bit of yeah, chat. Exactly. You know what I mean? You, like you don't want to go in and actually stay in a room with a person for an hour and not even say, not even ask them how the weather is. You know? Yes. Um, and like for for me, that's been key to getting getting right. If that's the word, if that's the keeping the mind busy, keeping the mind occupied, and stuff like that. And yeah, look, there's days that we'll cripple you again and we'll get back up and we'll go again. And like the thing with it is, what, what I want is like, Stacey's the same, like Stacey runs her own business and in Fox's Bow and like, like that again, she's constant, go, 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 you know, and it's that, that thing as well. And we've, like, we'd like to put that into our, our kids, like, you know, that working hard, you know, it won't always come like this, yes, you know what I mean? Time. It takes time. It takes like hard work will, will, will get you everywhere. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And like that's all we want. Just just kind of like You see, same thing with you asked me, why am I doing this? Yeah. It's not it's mainly to showcase that people like we say, it doesn't matter from what you go through. Yeah. Okay. Bad times, good times, shitty times. Yeah. That you can always make it happen. Yeah. You know I mean? Absolutely. Like you know, when you went through a very, very bad period of your time through, you know, hoping that that could prolong mm -hmm. and go forward, but it didn't. Yeah. It started, you know, yeah. as you said, it hit you after two Massive, years or yeah. so. And then instead of being an active person and pushing forward, pushing forward, you stop. Yeah. So you needed something new to, to get you out of This is it, like, yeah. And I suppose therapy was that. So that's yeah. a great thing to know. It's been good, like, as I said, it was never, it, it started as a total hobby, as a distraction and, and stuff. But I, I've been lucky, like, I've, like, I remember coming in and, what do you call it, it works in, as I said, as a player, it works in Gollum and Fox's Ball. And I went in there very, very, what do you call it, like, I go as I had my bed and my bottle of oil and <laughs> starts on the wall, everything was great. And I, I had two people, two people come in, I'm sorry. Okay, that's good, that's really yes. good. Two people in a week. Like. <laughs> that's excellent. <laughs> you know, that's brilliant. Um, and so I decided, like, the thing with it is, it was to move on. I done um, with Eric in the, the training room, and that brought a different element to it as well, um, because we were actually in a gym 
And you were dealing with people who do yeah. sports. Yeah, so like, and, and it was kind of that referral process as well, then, like, and I had been training with Eric too. Um, then we went into Catchin Street, just around the corner. It was kind of, everything was kind of always oh, expanding, expanding, you know, and I kind of wanted to look just the next, just what can, what, yeah, what, can, yeah, yeah, what can I get, what can I get, you know, and it was always kind of, and I have a big kind of thing in, there's no such thing as like looking back and going, or, or, like, you can't really have goals, you can have goals, get, don't get me wrong, but like some people get set back when they don't achieve them, yes. so like, like if 2018 or 2019 was really good, okay, make 2020 that, just better, yeah. that little better, and what you didn't do last year, do a little bit more of this year. You know, and, and like that, we did the Catch Street. Um, it was, that was a different dynamic in a sense. Um, it was just, I, I don't think it really worked for me. The, the, the setup itself wasn't ideal. And I remember I rang Christian in Planet Health. And I said, listen, you don't have a room by any chance. He goes, yeah, come on over. And I remember it was so funny. Um, he brought me in, he goes, Liam, you love this room. He opened the door, right, and it looked like something out of CSI. Right? Like, oh my god, who died? You know? And I was looking at it thinking, oh, I can see everything, it's perfect. And he's looking at me thinking, man, it's like, like looking into the back of a Mr. Bim and Laurie. Like, it was so, like, in, and in, and in, in, within seven days, he had it like, like, oh my god, right? And I was there, like, Planet Help was, was really good to me because that, that really brought me on, um, in a sense. It kind of gave me a real, a bit more stable environment. Um, it, like you got to meet really like you're in and out kind of every day. You met people that you, you never knew before. Like and you're kind of you, like you might have passed and gone, "Hi, how are you doing?" But like after a while, you, you know, you stop and go, "Well, Brian, well, Ty, what's going on?" Yes. All this, you know, um, more personal. it's more personal. Like, yes. and that's kind of what I like. I like to kind of get to know clients that bit better, you know. And like the thing with it was, it was close to home and everything. And then, like in the middle of last year. Call Connor here in the Woodlands and um, said, Would you be interested in coming out? Like, and you're thinking, No, oh, this can't be real. Like, you know, it's like <laughs> Woodlands, like, you know, so it's like really. Yeah, they have a very yeah, good reputation. Um, yeah. like maybe, maybe he got the wrong number, maybe it wasn't, you know. <laughs> so and, same person. And, yeah. so really bad. and like, we, we, we were meeting over a couple of times, like, and stuff, and like, he kind of listened, he listened to kind of, I told him what. This would be this is what I what, is, what I'd love. This is what I'd like if this was here. If this was here, and like he was so easy to deal with. Like the family here, the servants are they're, they're a different level. Like, and he, I just walked into this place and I was like, oh yes, we have it, you know. And the thing with it is that we've been able to, like what we've looked for in the whole time, like say from a recovery point of view, gym point of view, um, relaxation point of view, everything is just like. Everything the whole back of jail. Had, you know, and the thing with it is like if we like and again like you never stop learning um in a sense of different avenues you can approach, you know, you don't know when like the next person that walks through your, your door could be like you know, like in, in what sense you can help them, you know, like you're meeting yeah, new clients. Yeah, yeah. you yeah. meet new clients and like look my background would be like would probably be between soccer and GA and like like Woodlands is kind of like a GA central, like it's, it's yes. like, you know, um, from, from living players and stuff like that, from club players, like there's a lot of successful uh, clubs like on our doorstep here, like I work with Patrick Swell, GA, they won the yeah, county yeah. last year, you know, so it was nice and like Adair doing really well in football and Castle West, and like you're kind of central, even though like I thought it was super central where, where I lived, right, I'm not to where I need to work. Yes. You know, so that, that's one thing, like, location was, or is key, like. Bang yeah, and it is, like, and, like, I'm here, I think I'm here six months nearly now, and it feels like, like, the staff here are really good, they're really friendly, like, you know, they, you know, they kind of, they're always messing, like, you know, it's a good track, yeah, the environment is huge, you know, and it's positive, and, like, coming out my door in the morning to go to work, actually, like, going to work. Does it feel like yeah, like the, the thing with it is, like I'll, I'll be honest, and like I know, I know I'll speak very highly of the army the whole time. It was just the last couple of years before I retired. I just the love wasn't there, do you know, and I kind of fell out of love with it. And like the thing with it is, like some men say, maybe you never fell in love with it. But I think I think failure is one of the best things you can do. Yeah, you know, and I'm not I'm not going to throw oh, super cliches or and failure is 
key to success. Um, because if you think it's just one plane wave, it's yeah, your your what's called, we'll you know, it, yeah, yeah, it's not like, and you will you'll hit setbacks and you go, why why aren't people coming in, you know? And maybe it's me, maybe it's this, maybe it's the area, maybe it's um, and then like, yeah, maybe it's not for you. Yes, true. Do you know, um, yeah, do you, yeah. And that that's a lot of it. Like people kind of go thinking like people go, oh, I want to go to college, I want to be this, maybe not, no. maybe you're not designed. Be that, yeah. You know, and that's fine, but like. But I think that's the pressure from the society massive, itself. Massive, massive. Like it's pre-drilled in your head. Yeah. You know, you need to go to school. After school, you need to go to college. After college, you need to get the job. After yeah. job, you get you. You know, as soon as you get the job, you need to get married and you need to buy a house. Yeah. And you know, it's just like a snowball. There is, but and, and the thing with it is, I suppose the effect the social media is having now as well that like you compare you compare to somebody. And you go, Look, like you all, we all have heroes. We all have we all have idols. But the, the, the thing with it is, I remember um, a good friend of mine, and he actually got to know him well through um, Sophie, um, Jerry Duffy. Was his, his big thing was don't be afraid to change. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Don't, don't like the fear of change. Like for me to come here was huge. Like there was nights I didn't, I, I didn't sleep, kind of thinking, oh man, I, I made it. Like I won't be able to match this. Yeah. And I think that's what kind of drives you, that's the focus inside that you kind of go, do you know what, I can because I'll make it work. Yeah, you know, and the one who's in the yeah, yeah, and I, I will make it work. And like if, you, like, if you have the opinion, as I said, that things are going to land in your lap, it's certainly... And like, for me, it could have been, it could have been anything, like I could have left the army to, to, do, to do whatever I wanted, you know, and it was just, this was the path for me. Um, and I'd always look at, like, the thing when it is, People kind of, I want to be this, right? And this is what I kind of find with, like, like queer guidance and stuff yes. like that. Like, what do you want to do? Do you want to work outdoors? Okay, you can be a builder, you can be this, you can be, listen, you can work outdoors in an office if you need to be, you know, you don't need to be tied into something. Yes, you know, um, like for me, like the only advice I'd have for somebody that's leaving school, you surely want to be hungry enough to chase it, you know? Um, like, and it has to be a passion. Yes. So if you're in a job and you're, whatever you're doing, and you absolutely hate it, get it, ruin it. Yeah. That would be the look. And like, I, I don't want anyone to take it on and actually think, do you know, do a Michael Douglas throw down the thing and walk down the town with, with, with a gun in their hand. But like, the thing with it is, like, if you're hungry, hungry for what you do, passionate about what you do, and love what you do, then it's not, it's not work. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's you're enjoying it, like you know, like my job now has me on the sideline of hurling bitches, soccer bitches. I love watching sport. Yes. You know, granted, I just can't get caught up in the game, and there's two, <laughs> three <laughs> people <laughs> are falling. <laughs> and falling on the but yeah, look, I, I, I know. Enjoy that's my job. Yeah. You know, yeah. to, to do that, and um, I love it. Like, and regardless of where it was, and as I said, I've had super opportunities from cycling teams. Boxers, runners, soccer players, hurlers, everything come true. And like, as I said, down to the that older guy as well that I'm helping, and and and, and, and other people that you help, you, you take a reward in that way. Yes, you do. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And as I said, if they go on to do, achieve something, right, you just take that little nugget. Yeah. Not that it was you that did it completely. It wasn't. No, but you were but, there to to, yeah. have, to achieve that. Just that's the, the, the thing. Like, like, and it, yeah. it's I suppose like. Look, I, I'll be honest, this is, I mean, I'm in a position now to do something that I love, you know, and it's like, it does afford me, yeah, it's busy, don't get me wrong, it's busy then, and the nights are long and, and things like that, but it does afford me time with my family when, yeah. when I need it, you know, I'm not looking for, I'm not looking for time off, I can take time off all I want, but that doesn't pay the bills either, but like the thing with it is, you can, like, I'm, I'm my own boss, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And granted, yeah, as I said, times times get rocky and hard and anyone that tells you different is a liar. Um, but you that passion will only just drive literally forward, yeah. drive forward on it like and the thing like there's it's um it's, it's caught on it's, it's it's gonna it's gonna jump out my head, but um it's just it's down um like it was actually it's actually stuck with me. The rewards are highly used. That he was interviewed on the um, the after the one day I in twenty eighteen, and he said, um, uh, "Not beats hard work." 
That's true. Man, I agree with that 100%. Nah. And like the thing with it is, like it's not a case of going out and shoveling or building and building this or it. it's it's hard work, it's relentlessness, like, yes. you know what I mean? Over Being obsessed by it. Exactly. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And and like that from that side of things, like I don't like I don't go around thinking uh, looking at competition in a sense because like I'm I'm, I'm in my own competition. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I have to like as I said, the next year has to be better than last year. True. Regardless if last year was like Brilliant. past. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? So like and that's yeah, but the if thing. you don't have that goal. Yeah, like I like the thing what it is, I can tell you like I can ask you what your new year, new year's resolution was or what goals you have in life, but like how how do you break them down to go for uh, do you yeah. know what I mean? So I don't know what's gonna happen next September. Do you know what I mean? I don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow. True so. so like yeah, I can plan for it. But you have to adjust I was gonna play around, around it. Yeah. You. That's that's the thing. So you can plan and you can have like yeah, I'm going to a concert in April, you know, that's great. We have that that started, right? But in a journey of where where you want to go, where you want to go personally, that's that 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 is no plan. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, there is little steps, but you can't kind of go, yeah, look, I'm just going to be a billionaire in two years' time, I'm going to retire and everything. That's like, realistically, unless you win the lottery. Tell me, tell me one thing, <clears throat> this is basically for kind of towards the end of it. Um, when it comes to all this, you've passed through everything and you've done everything when it comes to the starting your own business, helping people, working with people, because that's part of your mm -hmm. job. You know, and we, were, we did mention it, but I just want you to basically recruit it and just say it. Would you recommend to others who are going out from the school, college, or anything like that, or as you said, yeah. they're happy with something, would you recommend them to try it and do something on their own, or what would be your total idea on, on that? Um, I suppose, like, in a sense, like, I, I can go back to my own son in a sense. Um, yeah, like, he did a course during TY, a barrel course. Right, fell in love with the barrel horse. Left school and now he's a barrel. Right, he's got a skill can take anywhere in the world. Yes. Right, and like like that as well. College, school, it's not for everyone. Like, and don't get me wrong. He'll say, "Oh, you never need to go to school every month." Yeah, I did. Yeah, because there is a part of where education is key to going on. Right. Like, so, like, yeah. Again, it might be for everyone, but I just wanted it to be to be for him. Um, there's a big world out there like, and the thing with it is, as you said, it's not set in stone that you have to go to college, have to get the job, marry kids and so yeah, on, like, you know, like there's so much out there at the moment, like my, the only thing that I, and I probably touched on it already, like is that entitlement, by all means go get your job wherever you feel, go to college, don't go to college, don't drop out of school, whatever, but don't think that it's just going to happen. Yes. Do you know what I mean? That you're just going to fall into it and it, it, like, it doesn't, it's not that case. And like, a lot of kids at the moment think that like, yeah, I'll be fine, I'll be, you know, they, they have everything planned. Yeah. Everything's down the road from but like, no, it's not like. It can change like this. It can right? change like yeah. that. Like, and then the other side of it too, as well, if, like, happiness is everything. Believe me, it's, it's, it's like if like there's times there, am I completely happy? No, there's a part of me missing. So, like, am I completely, yeah. yeah, am I completely happy? No, I can say it or not. There's a part of me, you know, and I have my family, I have my own um, environment that I work in, and I'm happy. I'm very happy with those, you know, I'm very happy. I didn't complete, no, I've lost somebody so close to me. Yes. That that's that is another is is gone. So like to be completely like and the thing with it is if you can have those people around you, that that little circle and circles need to be kept small because they say that you can fit your best friends in the telephone box. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> like there there are things like you know so like if if you were there yeah like you have people close my like my family are my directing to me now. Yeah, you know they always were, and they're even that way there when you lose them, you know, and it's that reality and things like that. So that you, you gotta take that forward in life as well, 
Like if, if, if it's a case that you feel that a uh, colleague is for you, go for it. Go for it. You know what I mean? It's like anything there. Like if you like going out to play a match on a Sunday or Saturday, don't go half hours. Go fully on. Go full on. You know what I mean? And, and, and that thing, if you can give yourself everything and you can walk away from it and honestly say, look, it's not for me. You know, and that's the thing, and that would be for across the board, like in life, not just school or anything like that. I would definitely feel that somebody who isn't happy or wants kind of something else. If you travel, you know, you might want to travel the world and listen, off you go. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Don't as, get... as I would say, the, 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 the life is too short, so if you decide to do something, yeah. go and do it and just be happy. Just, and, and just be willing to work it, regardless. And if it's a case that, you really, really, really want it, well then you have to really, really work for it, man. Yes. You know? Liam, it was an absolute pleasure to talk to you today. You too. I hope you enjoyed it with me as well. Thanks very much. Yeah, an absolute pleasure. pleasure. Thank you. Uh, I will share all the information about Sophie's Foundation. Um, we'll pass on the links, URLs, and everything else. Same thing, I'm going to pass the information about the Liam himself. You can find him in the Woodlands Hotel, in Adair. Um, anything that you would like to know about sports therapy, physical therapy, or anything like that, that you would like to maybe ask, you're not sure, you can always Absolutely. reach uh, Lim. And anything about this interview or anything that you would like to know about myself or Lim, please do pass on the information, the, sorry, uh, ask, and I'll pass the information to you. I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you learned something new, and it was an absolute pleasure to speak with another living legend, Lim Mukahi. Wish you all a good day, it's John K.O., Let's Chat Podcast. <laughs>